Dr. Paul Horenbey. Who do you think after more than 25 years after discovery of endocannabidiol uh, system that uh, scientists and doctors and physicians, at least here in Slovenia, don't know anything about it? It's, uh, it's been 25 years now. The United States of America still has THC as a Schedule One drug saying it has no medical value. Yeah. There's been an explosion in medical research since the discovery of the receptor. It, it's only showing ignorance by not saying it, by saying it doesn't have medical value. That's only ignorance because they're not reading the literature, they're not having the understanding of the research that's being done. And they're not trying to have the understanding. How can I trust a physician that is trying to cure me and doesn't know anything about endocannabinidiol system. They, they should know. They've had time to learn. In Canada they've had 10 years of prescribable medicine, but still many fear to. The physicians are afraid to write a prescription. This is, in my mind, the control of the pharmaceutical industry that fears the competition of a natural product, cannabis medicine, and doesn't want it around. Because if indeed, it, I keep going on about full utilization of the cannabis plant, if it's fully utilized for the medicine that's available in it, the pharmaceutical industry would lose its analgesic market, its antidepressant market, um, its, its anti-inflammatory market. It, would, it could threaten potentially threaten the pharmaceutical industry, which is a trillion dollar a year business. Um, cannabis has that kind of power. It's so such a useful plant, that's the reason it's been banned, because it was competing with so many other industries around the turn of the century. But why is pharmacy trying so hard to isolate cannabinoids uh, for medicine? As, but we know very well that uh, cannabis works well only in its natural form because it's an uh, entourage effect. The, this entourage effect is what I've been waiting for for many years, something that will prove that. I've been involved in natural medicine since I spent a year in India way back when during my doctorate training where I, my switching think, my, my thinking switched from what I was trained in is pharmaceutical like synthetic medicines to natural medicines where I've experienced absolute miracles happening with natural product medicine, particularly cannabis, which is the big daddy of natural medicine. It has a huge efficacy range because we're loaded with receptors that respond to the chemicals in the cannabis plant. Um, I'm going on a bit of a rant here, but indeed the pharmaceutical industry will have a heyday with the synthetics that they will build around the endocannabinoid system. We've already counted almost a thousand new compounds that have been synthesized around this system. They will make tons of money from this, but natural product cannabis medicine has been shown to be more effective than synthetics, particularly extracts. For example, if you give a person pure cannabidiol, synthetic CBD, it's a potent blocker of what's called the cytochrome P450 enzyme in the, in the human liver, which is an, an enzyme system, but pure CBD potently blocks the enzyme that metabolizes most pharmaceutical drugs. So potentially that could lead to an overdose if you block that enzyme a pharmaceutical drug will go up in your blood and in your brain and could potentially lead to an overdose. It, extracts of cannabidiol containing high amounts, roughly 40% of CBD, don't have this cross-reaction effect because within that mix there are enzyme inducers as well as enzyme blockers so it kind of modulates the effect in an entourage-like way and you don't see the cross-reaction with, with an extract of CBD as you would with pure CBD. Mm -hmm. And I am of the mind that synthetics don't belong in biological systems because 
our liver doesn't recognize their resonance or their energy and breaks them down into toxic metabolites, which causes side effects. Mm -hmm. And they can kill them. So there is no place for synthetic drugs from cannabis, right? <laughs> I'm glad the pharmaceutical industry does what it does because they show us the mechanism of how the individual cannabinoids bring about their effects. What is that mechanism? Is it receptor active? What's turned on by that activation of receptor? Is it a, a blocking of an enzyme that will cause different biochemical effects? The pharmaceutical industry works out that mechanism, but then they synthesize around it. And they will make one magic bullet compound that's supposed to go into a biological system and have, a, have an effect. But too often, they're toxic and, and they're deadly. Uh, there are synthetic opiates that you, they can kill you very easily. Uh -huh. just due to, that's what heroin addicts are dying of these days. They're not dying of heroin that comes from Afghanistan. They're dying of synthetic opiates made by the pharmaceutical industry. And, and they kill you really quickly. Uh -huh. So it's good for research, but not for uh, curing people with... Personally, I wouldn't. I don't use synthetic medicine. Yeah. I, I use natural medicines. And I'm 63 years old. I'm a bit loony, but I'm pretty good health. I, I mean, I feel good. I'm not overweight. I'm balanced out, and I I feel pretty good today. You spent quite some time in Slovenia so far. What do you think about the uh, Slovenian uh, situation concerning cannabis and how could Slovenia change the European environment? Uh, <clears throat> I've been to Slovenia four times in the last two years. It's, as I've been all over Europe uh, o over time, but Slovenia is my, my favorite European country. Thank you. There's a number of reasons. Uh, for one, you have classic countryside, it's just gorgeous. And two, the people seem to downplay capitalism more than we do in Canada, where we're all capitalists, we're all grabbing for money. Um, but what I like about Slovenia is you have been growing hemp for many years. And I think of the girl that started the very first dispensary in Vancouver in 1998, and if she hadn't stood up, stood up and said that she was going to distribute cannabis to people in need with a doctor's prescription, told the city what she was doing, the fire department, the police, and she got away with it. She was a gifted diplomat, but still she started the very first dispensary in the city. Now there's more than a hundred. The, what's the problem in Europe around the hemp plant is regulation. It's regulated for the strain that you can use, it's regulated for THC amount, it's regulated up and down all over the place. I sincerely believe it should only be regulated for if it harms someone. And hemp just doesn't harm anybody. It's the most nutritious food you can get from the seed. You can, everything that's not made from glass or metal can be replaced by hemp. So this building here could be replaced by hemp. The biggest industries in the world are fuel, food, and pharma. All make a trillion dollars or more a year. Cannabis, hemp, could take a sizable lion's share of that profit. And it's a, it's a renewable resource. It takes 40 years to grow a tree, then we make pulp and paper from it. It takes three months to grow hemp. Petroleum, we will run out of someday. Hemp is renewable. You can make ethanol from it. You can run cars on it. You make plastic from it. You make clothing from it. You make nutritious food from it. You can make medicine from it. If we only get around these stupid regulations that are limiting the, the full utilization of, of the hemp plant, you can't get high from hemp. Hemp will never go above 1% above THC. It's not allowed to. The genetics won't allow it. Your hemp in Slovenia is about 0.2 to 0.5% THC as a rule, and it never goes higher. So I don't know what all this fear about THC is. <clears throat> you won't get high from hemp because the CBD will buffer the effect of the small amount of 
THC that's there. You can't get high on Slovenian hemp or Croatian hemp or Serbian hemp or any hemp around the world because it just doesn't produce enough THC. That, that type of genetics. If you cross the hemp plant with a recreational high THC plant, one in four will come out what I call a 50-50, roughly equal THC in CBD. But that's the only three profiles of CBD and THC that you can get. High CBD, low THC, like in the hemp strains. High THC, low CBD, like in all recreational pot around the world. Or if you cross them, you'll get a 50-50. But you're not going to get a 70-30 or an 80-20. They, they, don't, they don't happen. Hemp will always be more than 20 to 1 CBD to THC. That ratio is permanent. If you maximize the environment, you can pull up the levels of those compounds, but that ratio won't change. And the CBD in hemp will always buffer out the psychoactivity of THC. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing to fear. Utilize the goddamn plant because <laughs> it's so useful. And there are just, it would mean an industrial revolution if we fully utilize the plant. And I, I'm ready for it because I don't fear the plant, but I think our politicians like we were saying earlier, are just aren't aware or are being pulled by the big industries that I talked about not to allow this utilization to mm -hmm. happen. But in a practical, in a smart, in a, in a sane world, we would use that most useful plant to its full capability, which is enormous. Thank you so much.